Ross, the gun lawyer. Today we're continuing onward. The gun lawyer here, Derek DeBross from Columbus, Ohio, in our office here downtown Columbus, the Brewery District, with Michael Truman, the man, the myth, the legend. He's the newest gun lawyer on the block, my associate. And we're going to be answering some more questions today. One from Craig. Craig says, I live in Ohio, uh, the Buckeye State, so I find your content very helpful. Well, thank you, Craig. We find it helpful as well. In regards to the private business is in posted no carry signs, are there any legal issues that someone can face by carrying their concealed handgun into a private business that has a no carry sign? It's what I call a CPZ. What do I mean by CPZ, Michael? Do you know? I do not. Cons uh, uh, criminal protection zone is what I call them. So <laughs> CPZ. Um, so if you have a CPZ sign on a business and I carry into there, uh, he asks, am I under the, he says, I am under the impression that if you were caught carrying and they ask you to leave and you do so, then you have not broken any laws. Am I incorrect in my thinking? Yes, you are. And Michael's going to tell you why. Yep. Craig, in Ohio, if you carry into a place that has the posted no gun sign, it is a criminal violation. It's a misdemeanor of the fourth degree. That means it's punishable by up to 30 days in prison. It doesn't matter. They don't have to ask you to leave first before it's a criminal violation. The moment you walk in those front doors and there's a no gun sign posted, you violated the law. How does that sign need to be posted? It has to be conspicuously posted. So, you know, if it's I walk into a movie theater, it's... We dropped our mic, sorry. That's okay, we got it. So if I walk into a movie theater, I see the no gun sign pasted all across the front doors. There's no way I could argue that wasn't conspicuously posted. Let's say it's only on one of the four front doors down in the very bottom left corner. Maybe then you have a little bit of an argument, but still probably not. Yeah. They don't define conspicuous, big surprise. That's always the problem in a lot of laws. Like they don't define the word promptly when they talk about promptly notifying law enforcement. Next one's from a Mad Maxer, 525. It's a pretty sweet name. Mad Maxer states, I'd like to see a video on this as well. Like if you forgot you're carrying and you didn't see the sign, do you have to ask, uh, do they have to ask you to leave if they noticed or do you find out they, do you, or do you find out they notice when the officer escorts you out in handcuffs? Uh, that'd be one way. I, you know, I've never actually had a client call me and be charged with this. I know it's happened, um, but it's, it's infrequent. Um, if you don't see it, it's a strict liability offense. There's no intent. So that, what that means to the, the listeners and my followers is they, they can charge you. Whether or not you intended and whether or not you missed the sign, if they can prove the government uh, that the sign was conspicuously located, even though we don't define that, and that you were in there with a concealed handgun license, uh, legally otherwise carried, uh, it's against the law, and you can be charged with that crime. Um, generally, one, how are they going to see it if it's concealed? Um, and, and two, uh, it is an M4. It's the lowest level misdemeanor. Uh, generally, uh, you probably can get it dismissed depending on the jurisdiction if you forfeit the gun, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, don't do it. You know, If you are in the store, miss the sign, and they have a sign like above the service desk and you see it, just leave. Uh, send them a letter maybe letter, later saying they lost your business and, and maybe they take the sign down. Just a quick note for our out-of-state viewers, this applies to Ohio only. This can vary from state to state. So if you're out of Ohio, you might want to check with a local attorney on whether yeah. this applies or not. Right. There, some states don't, don't have um, uh, the sign law. Uh, most states do respect private property rights, and, and I don't mind the signs in the sense that uh, it's your property, you should be able to do what you want. I don't be told to do what to do with my property, and um, I'm sure other people don't want that either. The next question is from Rip Van. Rip Van uh, asks, I'm about to take a CCW class in an unnamed Ohio county. Um, it's not a CCW class, it'd be a CHL class, I'm guessing. Uh, I hear that our county sheriff, who's a Democrat, is slow to process these permits because he does not believe that citizens should carry weapons. Would I be behooved to submit my application in a neighboring county with reciprocity for faster approval? Depends about the, on the county. Uh, it is possible. I mean, our sheriffs are elected. And when the law first passed, we had sheriffs that were refusing to even issue them. And that's why we have a law in the state of Ohio that you can apply in an adjoining county. Hypothetically, if you're in, let's say, Franklin County and the sheriff weren't, was not going to, and that, this is not Franklin County, by the way. He's very, Franklin County Sheriff will get it to you within 24 to 48 hours. But if, let's say, hypothetically it was, you could go to Madison County, Union County, and apply there. So, yeah, if you, if you have fear of that, go ahead and apply in an adjoining county. I see no harm in it.